next professor, Professor Oded Shoseyov. Professor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, what do we know about uh, cannabis? Admittedly, and I think that the last um, presentation uh, indicated that we don't really know well enough. I mean, we know it works like magic in some cases, but we definitely still lack a lot of know-how on how this uh, uh, composition, complex composition of uh, cannabinoids uh, can do good in different medical indications. But do we know uh, which composition uh, we would like to, uh, to give to a, a certain patient uh, that has a certain indication? Well, sometimes the doctors think they do. But the real question, can we really assure that every time that we give that composition, that the, doc that the patient actually get what the doctor prescribed. And uh, unfortunately, we have to admit that at this point of time, we are not there yet, at least when we deal with, uh, with the flowers. Now, this is a study that uh, was published by the Journal of the American Medical Association, uh, which at the end of the day says something uh, very alarming, patients are at risk because hundreds of thousands of patients are buying mislabeled products. And that study showed that 75 products that were tested, out of those 47 different brands, only 70% were accurate labeled. 23% were underlabeled and 60% were overlabeled. Uh, with respect to at least the THC content. And that's a big problem, and why is that? Because, consequently, there is a vote of no confidence by the medical doctors. And this study uh, was done uh, in Canada. Out of 100 doctors that were approached by the patient, and the patient actually requested to consider medical uh, cannabis treatment, 78% of the doctors in Canada, and I remind you, this is a country where it's legal, they refused. Only 21% agreed. Now, we shouldn't criticize the medical doctors for a simple reason. When they go to medical school, what they are taught is that once there is a recommendation on a particular drug, they expect that whenever they prescribe the drug, the patient will get every time exactly the same thing. We have to admit that this is not the case now. For example, when I have a headache and I go to uh, 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 the pharmacy and I will buy uh, Tylenol, for example, I know from my experience that if I take two Tylenol, you know, 20, 30, 35 minutes later, I'm fine, I don't have a headache. But the current situation, as you'll see, is that if that was the case in Tylenol, then once when I take the Tylenol, maybe nothing happened for five or six hours, and in the other case, it will put me in bed for 24 hours, I won't be able to do anything. So that's a big problem. And we have shown that, we have done some studies at the Hebrew University, uh, where we tested uh, hundreds of samples uh, and in all these samples, these are commercial samples of flowers that were supposed to be 18% THC. And this is the variation. Look at that. Some of those were uh, 2% and some were 25%. Hundreds of percents of difference. So it's not just in Canada. It's in Israel, it's actually all over the world. Now, coming from the Faculty of Agriculture, I'm not surprised. For a simple reason, because medical cannabis, as we call it, you know, at the end of the day, it's a flower, it's, it's, it's a biological system. And this, there is natural variation. Even if I and you go to uh, an orchard and we will, we'll stand behind a single orange tree. 
and I will pick one orange and you will pick another one, mine may be a little bit sour, maybe yours will be very sweet, and we're never surprised. Why? And it's the same tree. It's genetically identical, growing at the same time, the same day. Well, maybe one uh, of these uh, fruits was exposed to more light, maybe the other uh, was uh, the fruit was set maybe two weeks earlier, who knows? Now, these natural variations are there and we cannot ignore them. But the real question is, how can we solve it? Well, of course, testing. So HPLC uh, analysis is a, a traditional, it's an excellent method, it's ex extremely accurate, particularly when uh, uh, it is properly devised and executed. And in fact, any variation, or significant variation in HPLC, typically results from uh, simply misuse of the device or uh, a bad pre sample preparation. The method is accurate. It's a great method. But in fact, HPLC uh, has some impractical uh, 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 aspects uh, for testing the potency of medical cannabis for many reasons. First of all, every test takes anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. That's a long time just to, to test each of the flowers. In addition, HPLC must be operated by highly skilled and highly paid technician. So this is not a job for a non-skilled person. HPLC requires large overhead expenses and HPLC reduce hazardous uh, produce hazardous waste solvents and consume disposable equipment. So it's not, very pra it's not practical to test each, and one, uh, each of the flowers with this method. But the other thing, it actually reminds me of this uh, Jewish uh, joke about Herschel, eh? that uh, you remember his, his mother sent him to buy matches. But she said, make sure that they are good matches. So he tested all of them. <laughs> and this is HPLC method. That's what we're doing. We're testing and then we're trying. So this is a destructive method. Well, the real question is, can we do something better? Can we do a non-destructive, accurate analysis of the cannabinoids? And in fact, there is such a method. And in fact, the agriculture industry used that method extensively. And that's remote sensing by near-infrared spectrometry. Today, there are systems that are enable us to sort apples by the level of sugar. So we can take those that are, oops, sorry. Can you put it, uh, go back? Just switch the wrong one. Ah, got it, okay. So in fact, yes, there, there is this uh, uh, method and we can uh, really uh, uh, sort the flowers, uh, I'm sorry, the apples, um, according to uh, the, the level of uh, sugar. So why can't we do it? with the medical cannabis. I'll get there in a second, but first I'd like you to understand how this method works. So the principles are actually uh, quite simple. It ter turns out that every molecule, in every molecule we have bonds between different atoms. And these bonds are vibrating in different modes. On the left-hand side you can see, for example, these two atoms there are, are a, a bound to uh, the yellow uh, uh, atom that will be, say, carbon, and, the, the, uh, and, and for, for the sake of the uh, discussion, uh, the, the blue will be hydrogens. And uh, you can see that they have this symmetrical stretching. Uh, also, you, we can see some asymmetrical stretching. And then we can have this scissoring and twisting and rocking and wedging, and all these different vibrations have a particular uh, a, a absorption energy or particular rhythm that if we will shine those with the light at the right spectrum, the different bonds uh, or different molecules will absorb different uh, wavelengths. And when the light is then being reflected back, it is of course missing those that were absorbed by the molecules. So this is really the principle. We can shine light on the object. Typically, um, a, a, this will be a, a plant tissue. 
So you've seen the apple, uh, but it can be done also with the cannabis. What happened is if we shine it at the near infrared region, so anywhere between 700 nanometer to about uh, two micron, typically this light will penetrate almost two centimeter into the tissue. The molecules that make up uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the tissue will absorb the particular uh, 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 wavelengths that they do, and the reflected uh, light will actually tell us something about the chemical makeup. Now, obviously, this picture that we are getting is extremely complicated. And why? Because we have tens of thousands of different molecules. Each one will have hundreds of different vibrations. So the picture is very complicated. So typically, if you look at, let's say, uh, medical cannabis flowers, they have known different THC levels, and you then look at the near-infrared spectrum, it doesn't say uh, uh, much. Okay? It looks uh, meaningless to us. However, once we start to apply on these, uh, uh, on these uh, uh, spectra, uh, machine learning algorithms, sophisticated mathematic tools, all of a sudden, we start to see some reason. As you can see, for example, uh, here, you can see that all of a sudden, uh, those that the red, so the high concentration of THC at that particular uh, uh, wavelength, have some correlation with the concentration of the THC. And of course, we can build it for any uh, one of the, uh, 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 the cannabinoids. So the technology is actually in use, and today in the world, there are different companies that offer near-infrared uh, uh, spectrometry analysis to medical cannabis. So they generated extensive uh, 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 calibration curves for the major cannabinoids. And all you need to do is to take the, uh, uh, the flour, grind it, put it into the machine, and very quickly you get a result. But here is again the problem that we need to grind it. So we are back to Herschel's story, right? Because we don't want to grind the flowers. We want them intact. So question, why can't we do this measurement on intact flowers? And the answer is because the cannabinoids are not equally and homogeneously distributed on the flower. They are located in these very special hairs that are called trichomes. These are very special kind of cells that store the cannabinoids. And they are not equally distributed. So that's why we have to crush it and to homogenize it. But we said, hey, we, sh we, want we, we don't want to do that. We would like to keep it intact. So how do we uh, uh, solve the problem? So by using image analysis systems, which are now uh, very uh, uh, um, advanced, we can take extremely high resolution picture of the flower and you need high resolution because remember these trichomes in terms of size they are anywhere between 50 to 200 microns so they're really tiny and by doing applying image analysis tools we can make something which is called a heat map that shows us exactly where the, cannab the, where the cannabinoids are uh, uh, concentrated and how are they distributed in the flower so the technology was initially developed at the Hebrew University, but then a company uh, called Cannabitech actually took it uh, further and actually they developed it a, a tool to do it by remote sensing. So the principles are very simple. All you have to do is to stick your flower in this machine that looks like uh, uh, you know, a, a, a milkshake uh, <laughs> maker. So it's a very, very small uh, device. You can probably see it. Uh, uh, down there um, in, the, in the exhibition hall. And, uh, and then what happened is that a high-resolution camera take picture, analyze the data, send it uh, first to the cloud, and then 
a, a, a through a smartphone. So there is a smartphone uh, using a, a simple uh, Wi-Fi communication. Uh, now make a connection between the cloud and the machine and the device. And it's a tiny robotic arm takes the near-infrared sensor and point it to where it wants. And by doing that and collecting the data, the algorithm in the cloud actually calculate the amount of the CBD, CBDA, THC, THCA. And in less than a minute, you have it on your smartphone. Now, the beauty of that is, of course, that first of all, it's not 45 minutes, it's fast. Second of all, we didn't do any harm to the, to the flower. So now we know exactly what is the flower that we are going to consume. So all that takes less than one minute, and that's quite exciting. But where is the future? We are now working on the next generation of sensor that will take no more than four to five seconds. By doing that, we will now be able, hopefully, to integrate it into a packing and sorting uh, um, a, 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 a system. So each one of the flowers will be sorted and individually packed. Now, how is that going to serve our main target and remind you, closing the, uh, uh, the, the, the learning cycle? So each one of these flowers you can see on the, on the left hand side will have a QR code. Now, that QR code uh, then tells us exactly what is the near-infrared spectrum of that particular flower. So when the patient gets, as advised by the doctor, the variety or the type of flower that he wants with the level of CBD or THC or other cannabinoids that we know how to determine, just before he starts to use it, he will scan the QR code and of course, with the patient consent, now the system will start to send to the cloud the well-being of the patient as a result of that particular flower. So we are now going to generate millions of data points that will link between the well-being on one hand and on the other hand, the near-infrared spectrum. Now that information will enable us to feed back, for example, to the breeder and tell them, hey, you see that peak? This is correlated with vomiting. Get rid of it. Or you see that peak? This correlates with very good and, and a, a good night's sleep. So make sure it's there always. On the other hand, we will be able now to feed back to the doctors and to the patients, hey, you probably don't use the right uh, a, a, a variety for you. Maybe you should try another one. So this is really, uh, uh, hopefully, will enable us to close faster the learning cycle. And by that, I'm going to finish and I'll say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Okay.